let's set up the wizard to see if we can get this uh, see if we can get our linear stage moving so we go into the wizard and here's the wizard in its default mode it defaults to bench test and we've already done the bench test now these other selections are motor drives these motor drives match the schematics that Centroid provides. So what you want to do is you always want to try and bench test your equipment first. Get your motor drives set up here on the bench. Get your stepper motors or your motors on the bench. Get everything wired up and do a test on the bench. Now again, these drives equate to the schematics that Centroid provides. In my case, I'm, I know I'm using a microkinetic stepper driver, but it is closest to the lead shine driver and that's the schematic that we used so you'll notice when I click lead shine the wizard automatically configured this inputs and outputs now there are a couple of deviations because I have only one axis the first input is first axis home limit we're using that we have a limit switch right here we don't have a 2, a 3, or a 4. So I'm going to set those to unused. So I click on the drop down, click unused, drop down, unused, drop down, unused. Also, on my drive, I'm not using the drive OK output. Most drives have them. I have to use special circuitry in my test case to use the drive OK. Drive OK means the motor drive. Now most lead shines have a, a drive circuit. You'll notice it on the schematic. Um, your drive may have a, a drive OK, but I do not. So I'm going to set this one to unused for the purposes of doing this bench test. Probe detect and probe tripped. I'm not using a probe. I mean, I can leave them. It won't hurt the operation of the software. But uh, we'll just go ahead and leave them for now. Outputs. Um, the no fault output. This is relay one. And when there is no fault, relay one on Acorn is will close. Here's relay one. This relay will close when everything's in the normal state. You can use this output to disable uh, a spindle drive, for example. Or if you have several things that you need to disable, if there's a fault or an e-stop, you can use this relay to, to control a relay with more contacts. So we'll leave that alone. I'm not using a lube pump, so I'm going to go ahead and set it to unused and you do that by clicking the corresponding output. We're on output 2 so we click output 2. Currently I'm not using a spindle brake so I'm going to set that to output 3. Okay I'm not using a spindle at this point but I'm going to go ahead and leave it alone uh, because we may hook up a spindle on it a little bit later in a future demo so we'll go ahead and leave these alone. And, and drive reset by cycling e-stop it will reset a drive. So if you had a drive fault and then to clear faults in uh, CNC 12 you cycle the e-stop or the reset button on virtual control panel. I don't have flood. I'm going to turn that off. I don't have a turn clamp on. I'm going to turn that off as well. Now take a look up here. By When I made these changes to the I.O. it turned it to custom lead shine meaning I'm deviating from the from plans. Um, I know my setup so I went ahead and turned off what I know I'm not going to be using. When you deviate from the plans this is going to occur. When at all possible try and follow the schematic when you do your bench test. Now if you don't have your you know you can wire limit switches up and and manually turn them on and off while you're doing a bench test so leave your limit switches hooked up. But some of this other stuff like I don't have a spindle drive you know, it, it won't hurt anything to leave these. So, uh, and we are going to leave them. But it, these, these being left will not affect the operation of this test. Okay? 
but just know when you make changes here it's going to change to custom and that means you're deviating from the schematic that Centroid provided and 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 that's common I mean every machine might be a tiny bit different or you might need to use some of these outputs like you don't have a uh, for example a spindle break release you don't have that but you want to use that output for one of these other features or functions a work light or you know you want to uh, a vacuum so you have a router table and you want to turn on your vacuum well you could assign it here now output 3 will turn on to turn a vacuum on so the wizard makes things very flexible so at this point I'm gonna write this page okay now we're gonna go to axis configuration these are labels you'll see the digital readouts labeled this way so axis 1 is labeled X axis 2 is Y axis 3 is Z and if you had a rotary you can set that to A B C W whichever you like but N is not used well I only have one axis and we're gonna call it X so we don't have a Y we're gonna set that to no we don't have a Z we're gonna set that to no and that means it's not gonna show up on the on the main screen display at this point we're not going to do anything else we're going to have to change some of these values but we just want to see if we have machine movement at this point this is the motor steps per evolution <clears throat> I have a standard motor that's got 1.8 degrees per step 200 steps per rev of the motor is normal but my motor driver is capable of doing it in full step where it would be 200 or half step means multiplying that by two or four hundred so it's either two hundred or four hundred let's just leave this alone and see what we get the turns ratio this is how many turns of the screw is needed through the reduction so if you recall I had a 24 tooth pulley on my ball screw and I have a 12 tooth pulley on my motor that's a two to one reduction and then so we're gonna have to multiply our screw pitch by two but let's leave this all alone for right now let's do some testing here's where we set our fast jog slow jog and our rapid jog here's direction reversal if our screw doesn't turn in the direction we expect it to here's where we change it and uh, homing direction and the travel limits this is our soft travels our software limits this is our software limits right here we'll set that here shortly but for the time being we're not going to do anything on this page other than what I did is set axis 2 and 3 to no. So let's write those. Say yes. Okay. Spindle setup. We don't have a spindle yet. We're just going to leave this all to default. We're going to hit right to settings one more time. We'll say yes. At this point we're just interested in axis movement and that the axis movement is in the direction we expect it to be. So let's go ahead and see if we can get things to move. Let's start up CNC 12. Okay, we've got a message here. Warning, a change was detected in the PLC program. The ACORN control board requires a power cycle. Failure to power cycle the ACORN board could lead to unpredictable results. Please close CNC 12 and then power off ACORN board and back up. F1 continue anyways or F10 to exit because we made a change with the wizard we wrote a PLC program that's what the wizard does is write a PLC program and send it to Acorn we have to power down Acorn at this point so I'm gonna go ahead and F10 now I'm gonna reach over here and power down my Acorn <clears throat> I'm gonna wait a few seconds I'm gonna power it back up Acorn's coming up I'm going to wait for the heartbeat light. Okay, my heartbeat light is on at one pulse a second. I'm looking at my Ethernet port. The yellow LED is on solid and the green LED is flickering. <coughs> now, if the heartbeat light isn't blinking for some reason or your LEDs on your Ethernet port aren't coming on, then what you want to do is power down Acorn. Power down your PC, power up Acorn, then power up your PC, and that should hopefully take care of everything. 
Now let's go ahead and start CNC 12 mil. Okay, it's up. Well, let's talk about a couple of things. This right here is a dialog box, and you'll get messages in this dialog box, whether there's a fault, a message will show up here. If there's, you know, something when the machine is running, you'll see messages here. So always key in on this box. Look in here. There's messages that may be trying to tell you something. So pay attention to the box. <clears throat> This is called the virtual control panel. Down here you'll see a reset button. It's a virtual reset button. Let's go ahead and press it and look in this dialog box and see what we get. Okay, there you go. It says 9033 reset initiated. Press reset to clear. If you go down here and look at the button, its state has changed. It says tripped. Press to clear. So let's press it. It's reset. It's, o it's in an okay state. And up here it says reset cleared. Now let's go over here to the virtual control panel. These are spindle control buttons. We may we'll use those in a later video. These are if you have multiple pulleys on your machine, these can be configured. Here's a reset home button. We'll talk about that later. Limit switch defeat. And what we're most concerned with right now is this button incremental and continuous jog. This is the jog mode. When it's in incremental, it's lit. It will move in in multiples of what you press. In other words, a multiple of 1, a multiple of 10, a multiple of 100. So it's in incremental. It moves in, in these steps. What we want, because we just want to test axis movement, we want to press this. Now it's in continuous mode. means when we press these buttons, the X buttons in our case, it will move continuously as long as we hold the button down. So right now what we want to do, let's just see if we have m movement. Okay, you see we have movement. We can move it back and forth. And that's great. Now what I want you to pay attention to is look up here where it says feed rate and inches per minute. I'm going to go ahead and press these buttons again. Watch the inches per minute. 10 inches per minute. That is the slow jog rate that was set in the wizard. Now if we want to kick it up to the fast jog rate, we click on the button. You'll see the tortoise and the hare. So if we when the button's lit, we're in the tortoise mode. When we click on it, now we're in the hair. So let's let's see what we get now. Uh, it's moving, and you can hear it trying to move, but you see it 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 stalls. So what's happening is currently it's trying to move the axis too fast, and it's stalling our motor. Our stepper motor is being our stepper motor is being stalled. <coughs> so. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves, but for the time being, let's go back into tortoise mode. Now we want to check our movement. Is it correct? So let me explain something. This is our machine table. This is our milling machine table. It's a standard milling machine. The spindle is fixed. It does not move. Okay? <clears throat> You'll see an X minus and X positive. And they have arrows. That means the spindle moves in that direction. All right? So, on a milling machine with a fixed spindle, when the table moves from left to right, it's moving in the negative direction. Okay? When the table moves from right to left, it's moving in the positive direction. Now, let's look at it from the spindle's point of view. When we want to move in the positive direction, the spindle's moving in this direction. So the table is moving from right to left. The table has to do the moving in a, in a milling machine with a fixed spindle. Now, let's make this example a little bit simpler. 
let's think of a gantry CNC router where the, the router actually moves. Okay? So now our, our axis motors, our axis is above and it's actually moving the spindle back and forth. Well, now you can see an X positive move is the spindle moving as this arrow denotes to the right. An X negative move is the spindle moving to the left. This confuses a lot of people because on a milling machine the spindle is fixed and the table has to move under the spindle. All right. So since we're configuring an imaginary X axis for a mill with a fixed spindle, the table needs to move from left to right in the negative direction. From left to right in the negative direction. Okay? So I'm going to press the X minus button and see which way it moves to see if we have our directions correct. And we don't. The table is moving from right to left. It's moving in the X positive direction. So we need to reverse that axis. So to do that, let's shut down CNC 12, exit. Let's go to the wizard, start it up. Go to axis configuration, and where it says direction reversal, we check yes. Write it, yes, saved. Let's go ahead and exit the wizard. Let's start up CNC 12 again. All right, let's look at our dialog box. It's ta trying to tell us something. It says software exited, cycle e-stop or reset to continue. What this message means is we exited CNC 12 and we restarted CNC 12 without powering down Acorn. In this case, it's okay. We didn't get the PLC issue that we got earlier and it had to shut everything down. So at this point, it's just asking us to cycle e-stop or reset to continue. So we can do one of two things. We can press reset or we can cycle e-stop. Let's go ahead and do the mechanical e-stop. Says e stop detected. Now let's reset it. E stop released. Now let's, here's our spindle. We're going to check our movement. So in the X minus, the table should move away from our spindle. And it is. So we've got our directions squared away. Now in the X positive, the spindle would be moving this way if it was a router, but in this case the table has to move from right to left. So let's let's do that. And it is moving. Okay? So now we've got our axis moving in the right direction. Now the next thing we got to do is we we need to go in and we need to tweak our motor steps per evolution. Now my microkinetics driver has two settings. It has half step and full step. I have it configured to half step. That means there have to be twice as many steps for one revolution of the motor. I have a 1.8 degree per step motor standard and it takes 200 steps to make a full revolution. If you multiply 200 times 1.8 you get 360. But now because I'm in half step it's going to take twice as many steps to make that full revolution so we need 400 steps per revolution of the motor so let's go into the wizard and change that of course you could have done this you know earlier if you'd like but I want to take things one step at a time we go to axis configuration and where it says 2000 we're changing it to 400 okay we're not we don't know the turns ratio yet let's just do this 400 because we know that's accurate we know that I'm half stepping my stepper motor and it's going to take twice as many steps to make a full revolution so steps per revolution of your motor 
however steps it takes to make that revolution. In my case, I have a stepper motor. It's going to take 400 steps to make one revolution. All right. If you have, uh, you're driving an AC servo motor and you have encoders, you would put your encoder counts here. So if you had a 2000 line encoder, you would use 2000. There would be 2000 counts of the encoder per one revolution of your motor. So since I'm using a stepper, I'm going to go with a 400. Let's write that. Yes. Save it. OK. Exit the wizard. Let's start CNC 12 mil. OK, I got the software exited cycle E stop reset to continue. So let's do it from the virtual control panel this time. OK. Now let's take a look at our, our movement and see what it looks like. Much slower. Okay, we're in the tortoise mode. Let's put it in the hair mode and see what it looks like. Okay. All right. So the next thing I want to do, we need to calculate how many threads per inch. We're going to do this roughly now. How many threads per inch there are on your screw. So if you have access, you should have access to your lead screw. If you know what it is, great. If you don't know what it is, you're going to have to crawl into there and look. And uh, I want to show you how to do this without a, with, with just a tape measure, basically. So I'm going to move this up to the almost the end of the travel. Okay. So what we want to know is how many threads per inch there are in the screw. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a tape measure here. I'm going to set it up right against my screw. I'm going to go to the the space between the crests of the screw. And then I'm going to count how many how many crests there are. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are about six. All right. There are six turns of the screw for one inch. Let's go into our wizard and roughly set that up. Axis configuration. Okay, we've set our motor steps per revolution. So steps per revolution is how many steps does it take to make one full revolution of the motor? We already explained that my my stepper driver is half stepping, so it's going to be two times 200 or 400, so that's set. Now turns ratio. If you are at one to one, you would set this, if if I was at one to one, meaning my motor was direct driving my screw, I would set this to six. But since my motor is belted to my screw to, with a two turns of the motor to one turn of the screw reduction, then I have to multiply my number of turns to the screw by 2. So it's 6 times 2. So we're going to put 12 in here. Okay. Let's let's write those settings. Okay, so now we've got that set. Okay, let's let's work on the homing direction before we get back to the software. There's two homing types. There's simple home and home to switch. Simple home means you're going to jog your machine at the beginning of your day or when you start up your machine. You're going to jog it to a certain position. Maybe you'll put a mark, you know, saying here's, here's, here's my X and here's my X mark. You're going to jog it to that point and you're just going to say this is my home point. In my case, since we have a switch, we're going to home to a switch. Now my homing direction, since on a typical mill, we want to home to a negative x, negative y, and a positive z. So we're going to set this to negative x. Homing sequence is the moves. What, what's going to move first when we start the homing operation? Well, in a typical mill, you want to move the z up and out of the way. <clears throat> 
and then in this case y will be the second to move and x will be the third to move well since we only have one axis we'll just leave it to we can change this to one there's only one now travel limit let's look down at our linear stage and let's roughly set this travel limit is setting a software limit we have a limit switch on the negative side but we have no switch on the positive side so we're going to tell the software how far can this axis move before it hits its hard stop let's take a tape measure and let's measure it okay it looks like we have about seven and a half inches of travel let's be conservative and let's set this to seven inches for the time being I hit the keyboard while I was doing this okay the travel limit is in the positive direction in other words we start at negative and we're going positive so we need to tell the software my travel limit is in the positive direction seven inches so where it says travel limit positive because it's a positive move we enter seven now let's write the settings to the CNC control configuration we say yes settings saved let's exit at this point because we're homing to a switch and we're telling the software that my switch is in the negative direction we can home to it now and we also told the software from my my home position in the positive direction seven inches is the max travel the software should stop at seven now we still have to do some fine tuning we just roughly tuned our turns ratio we said six threads in the screw and we have two to one so it's two times six is twelve we still have to fine tune this and that's why we have this why I have a dial indicator here to help us tune that and we're gonna get close I'm sure that this thing doesn't have is not gonna be dead nuts like something with an anti backlash nut and so forth but we're gonna get darn close and see how close we can get alright I'm gonna write it one more time for good measure everything looks good okay exit startup CNC 12 mil I'm sure we'll get that software dialogue that software exited dialogue and there it is let's wait for VCP to come up let's press it clear okay we're in continuous and we're in the hair I'm gonna I'm gonna when 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 we home when the software homes it homes in the slow jog rate what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to pull away from this negative. So we're going to move in the positive direction. And I was in the hair there. But now it says right here, machine home not set. Press cycle start to send machine to home position. Cycle start is this green button with the vertical bar on it. So let's go ahead and hit it and let's, let's watch uh, our axis you know let me back up once let's make sure our limit switch works let's trip it and it says X minus limit tripped so our X minus limit switch is working let me show you another place that you can test your inputs and check your outputs from this main screen let's go alt I and this is the diagnostic screen the first row is inputs, the second row is outputs. Memory and stages, you won't have anything to worry about. Acorn has eight inputs and eight outputs. So the only ones that you'll concern yourself are these first eight on inputs, the first eight on outputs. Now if you, you notice there's a box around the first one, that's the one that's highlighted. The box tells you this is the one we're working with. If you come down here, this is the descriptor of where that box is at. In this case it says INP1 first axis home limit OK it's green that means we used a normally closed limit switch and acorn sees it so let's check that switch you can see it now the LED is out now it's back on out back on and then if you use your arrow key you can go to the next one well this was unused you remember we set it to unused the third one we set to unused the fourth one we set to unused the fifth one is unused the sixth one we didn't change it is probe detect seventh is probe tripped and eight is e-stop okay 
So I'm going to hit our physical e-stop button because it's wired to input 8. Now you see it went red and our dialog box says emergency stop detected. Let me reset it. Now it's green and it's released. So that's good. That's our first eight inputs. Let's go down to outputs. The first one says no fault out. Well, this is output one. Let me get Acorn over here. I can do this. Is relay one. Output two is relay two. And then we got three through eight outputs. Well, what, what the green is saying is that relay one is energized and closed. This output is handy for you to use, It'll refer to your schematic. You know, you can use it for, for things like uh, a spindle drive. If you want to disable a spindle drive when there's a fault or you hit the e-stop button. Or say you have multiple uh, devices that you want to control when there's a fault. Um, you'll use that relay output and then you can control another relay that has multiple contacts on it and you can control however many devices you want when there's a fault or knee stop. Then you can scroll across and it, you, you, you see where it says output 2, output 3, those aren't controlling anything at this point. Output 4 still set to spindle forward so when we call a command to turn on the spindle this would turn on when it's in the forward direction Output 5 would turn on when it's in the reverse direction. This is handy when you're controlling, say, a variable frequency drive that needs to know which way you want to turn your motor. Drive reset out. This is if you want to reset uh, a drive when you recycle the e-stop. The e and output 7 and 8 were not used. So the point here is this diagnostic page is very handy when you're wanting to troubleshoot your inputs and outputs or you just want to see their states. So um, to get back out of this, you toggle it by hitting Alt-I again. All right. OK, machine home not set. Press cycle start to send machine to home position. So what we're expecting now is our table to move away from the spindle in the negative direction. So let's hit cycle start and see what we get. There you see it's moving. Let's let's watch and listen. Okay, it tripped it, it backed off. And now you see our X DRO is set to zero. Okay? So now we're ready to check some things. I'm gonna put a tape measure. We want to see where we're at with regard to how close we are in our travels. In other words, our distance moved. So I'm just going to set the tape measure right here just as a reference. I'm going to try an eyeball. I'm sighting down this block to the end of the tape measure. So now we want to, we can jog it or we want to command a move. Let's command a move. We know that seven inches is our max travel. Why don't we test that really quick? So I'm going to go in the positive direction. Let's go, let's go and the full seven inches. Okay, you see it stopped. Look at our DRO. DRO says seven inches. If you look down here, we fell just a little bit short of those seven inches. Okay, so you wonder, okay, how do we correct that? Well, we correct it by going back into our software and we change the value. We had 12 in there. We're going to need to change that. Now let's go ahead and let's reset our home position. So what it does is it's going to force the axis back, trip the limit switch and go back to zero. Okay, we're back to zero. So how do we make this more accurate? Let's do this again. Let's go ahead and we're going to use the manual data input feature of the software. G0 is a rapid move. G1 is a move that requires a feed rate. 
So let's go ahead and you'll see I have a dial indicator set up here and it has two inches of travel. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and manually move our block until we get zero on our, our dial indicator here. Okay. So how do we do that? Well, let's jog up to it. We're going to go in the positive direction. Okay, you see I overshot it. So let's go into incremental. And we overshot it by thousands. So this is one thousandths increments. Okay, so I'm back on it. I'm at zero. I'll adjust this a little bit. I don't want to touch it too much. Now let's go ahead and hit, I'm going to hit escape to get our MDI. Now what I want to do, so I can get my x-axis to a zero point, so my x-axis and my, my dial indicator at zero. Let's go to setup. This is part setup. And we're going to click on F1 part. And if you look at this little graphic, it says, set part zero position, select axis with F1. Well, we're on our X axis here. We don't have another X next axis, so it's going to stay at X. Edit the value if necessary, or press F10 to set position. We're just going to go ahead and hit F10. Now you notice our, our DRO is set to zero. Now, let's go back into MDI. Let's let's call a one inch move. In other words, this is going to turn 10 times and we'll see where it comes on our indicator. So we're going to do a G1 and we'll do an X1 and let's use a feed rate of 10 inches per minute. All right, to execute that, you hit the cycle start button. Watch our, watch our indicator here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we went 950 thousandths. We didn't go the full inch. So I'm going to write down on my notepad here, we called one inch, we commanded one inch, but we only went 950 thousandths of an inch. Let's go ahead and exit this. We want to go back to the wizard. Now there's a calculation that can be done. And being the lazy guy that I am, I created a spreadsheet and I'll make it available to you guys just to simplify things. Okay, here's my spreadsheet. Don't pay attention to this pictorial over here. This is when I was setting up my big knee mill. So over here it says we're in imperial revs per inch. And the first one says enter commanded distance moved. Well, I click in the box and we commanded a move of one inch. We hit enter. Now we're down in the second box. Enter actual distance moved. Well, we moved 0 0.950. And we hit enter. Now it says enter the programmed revs per inch. Well, it's 12 if you'll recall. I'm going to go into the wizard and we'll take a quick look at that. Go to axis configuration and here you see it says overall turns ratio is 12. Let me minimize this. Bring back my spreadsheet. And we're going to put the current value, the currently programmed revs per inch, to 12. Enter. Now, here's a, this is the corrected revs per inch. Enter this. Sorry, it's kind of hidden. Answer. Corrected revs per inch. Enter this new value in the control software. <clears throat> so let's write that down. It's 
Okay, minimize this. Just bring the wizard back up. Okay. Okay, let's enter that new value. One two point six three one five seven eight nine five. Let's write it. Yes. Settings are saved. Okay. Let's close the wizard. Let's restart CNC twelve. Okay, we got the software exited, cycle E, stop or reset to continue because Acorn is powered up when we exited the software and re-entered it. Let's reset. Okay. Now what we want to do is let's we need to rehome our machine. So let's reset home. Okay, we want to continuously jog, so we're going to hit the incremental button to turn that off. And I'm going to use the tortoise, and I'm going to jog in the positive direction. Using the tortoise is a safer bet when you're doing all this, so you don't wreck something like your indicator. Takes a little bit more time, but it's a safer way to go okay we overshot it so we'll go back in incremental we'll leave it in thousands and then we're gonna go back in the negative direction okay there we are alright now you'll recall we go to we want to set the part zero set up part we're already in X. Let's just hit F10 set. It's accepted. Now let's escape. Escape. Now let's go into MDI and let's call our one inch move. Now one neat thing that, that uh, the software does is it remembers your last move. So while we're in MDI and we've got our cursor blinking in the block, use the up arrow key on your keyboard and it'll recall the last move so it's kinda handy without having to retype it all so we're gonna do a G1 X1 so we're gonna move positively one inch at a feed rate of 10 inches a minute so let's go in here and hit the cycle start button one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay so it overshot it by about two thousands so you just repeat the same thing. You would write down, okay, we went one inch point oh oh two. And then you go back and recalculate things. So there's how you set things up, but you can see now that we're much, much closer. Alright. Let's go ahead and command a move, a rapid move back to zero, and let's see what we get. A rapid move is a G zero, and we want to go back to X zero which is our home position cycle start do you see that we had a stall that's the next next thing we want to address now that we've got our motor turns per revolution set up and our drivetrain set up let's go ahead and address this this uh, stalling issue why did it stall is because our motor doesn't have enough torque to move our axis <clears throat> at the rate that we wanted to move it. So let's escape, shut down, exit, let's go back into the wizard. Go back to axis configuration. Now, 50 inches per minute max is too fast. So let's change this max rate. Let's drop it to 40.
the fast jog has to be equal to or less than the max rate. So let's let's set them both to 40 and let's see how we do there. Now remember that is only during a rapid move. You know when you're machining something it's usually much slower than that. Let's close that. Okay, now that we're back into CNC 12, let's go ahead and rehome the machine. Oh, what did I forget to do here? I had a message in my dialog box. See, I went to try and rehome it, and I had a fault job canceled. Why? Because it said software exited, cycle E stop reset to continue. I failed to do that. Look in the dialog box for messages. Let's reset. Now let's try and rehome the machine. Reset home. If you watch the feed rate, it moves at the slow feed rate that's set in the wizard for homing your machine. You can see there's no stalling at this speed, there's no problem. Okay. Now you'll wonder, well, I just rehomed my machine. Why does it say I'm at negative five one two four three? Well, that's because it re it remembered the last part zero position. Part zero and machine zero are two different things. Now, if you want to see the machine position, press Alt D. If you look up here, that's machine position, machine datum. That's the reference point that the software uses for everything else. To get back out of that, Alt D. Now, what's this minus 51243? Well, that's where we set the last part zero. So, if we go into MDI, let's go ahead and try a rapid. A G0 is a rapid rate. And let's go to our zero position. And it should move in the positive direction, 5.1243 inches. Okay, we don't have any stalls yet. You hear that motor? Our 40 inches a minute. If you look up here, it says 40 inches a minute. Now we're at zero. And you see here, we're at zero on our dial indicator. What does that tell us? That we probably have about two thousandths or a thousandths a half of backlash in this mess. Because if you remember earlier, we were at two thousandths above it. Now we're at zero. But you see, this is our part zero. Why is this valuable? When you're machining a part, the software remembers where your last part zero was. As so if, say you made a run of parts in the evening and then you shut down for the day and then the next morning, all you've got to do is rehome your machine and it's ready to go to rerun some more of those parts. Okay. So we just tested a rapid movement, movement at 40 inches a minute and it didn't stall like it did at 50. So let's, let's go ahead and wrap it at back. We're going to take it off the tortoise. You can watch the inches a minute up here as I wrap it back to the switch. Oh, it's only moving in increments of a thousandth. Why is that? Because we have it in incremental. Let's take it, put it in continuous. Let's just run it all the way. You see the software automatically stopped it at its reference point, it's zero home. Let's do the Alt D again, take a look. There's machine home, that's machine reference, it's zero. Alt D again, back to our work coordinate system. Well, let's jog it back the other way. We're gonna go in the positive direction, and if you remember, we set our soft limits to seven inches, it should stop at seven inches.
once again you're looking up here and say wait a minute that doesn't say seven inches well we're 1.8757 to the other side to the positive side of our part zero let's use alt d again and you see we're at 6.99999 essentially we're at seven inches let's go back to our part position let's go back to negative we're just testing our rapids here so watching the feed rate up here watch it again I'm gonna do it one more time gonna go in the positive direction 40 inches a minute so let's see let's let's push this up a little bit let's go up to 45 and see what we get we want to kind of push this till it stalls we hear a stall and then we're gonna back it off okay we're gonna change both of these to 45 45 write the settings yes okay okay we'll close it we'll start CNC 12 mil okay so software exited cycle you stop reset to continue let's press it clear it okay so let's just go ahead and we're in continuous because the incremental LED is out let's move in the positive direction see how 45 inches seems let's go back you notice up the feed rate says 45 inches a minute let's run it back Okay. Let's go back. Sounds pretty good. But yet at 50 inches a minute that was too fast. Let's put it back to 50. Start the wizard. Change this one. The max rate to 50 fast jog to 50. Write it. Okay. Okay. Now let's start CNC 12 mil. We'll have to cycle that reset button. Okay. Let's jog in the positive direction. Okay, we got a stall. See, we got a stall. Now, watch the DRO. Okay, it continues even though there's a stall. That's because Acorn, it's sending out the signal to move, but it doesn't know that there was a stall. It can't read absolute position from the machine. That's called an open loop system, meaning there's no feedback from this. There's no scale. There's no encoder from, from the axis to Acorn. That's not possible with Acorn. It doesn't mean it's an inaccurate system. That's where it means that you have to make sure you size your motors to your machine properly. You use the proper reduction to make sure that you have enough torque from your motor to turn the screw to cut your parts and move the axis in a rapid. So we know that 50 is too fast. We seem to see that 45 inches a minute seem to be okay. So you can be real conservative and let's say at 45, let's multiply that by 20, which is nine let's say 35 inches a minute so let's go 35 inches a minute would be a conservative number so let's shut it down let's go into the wizard axis configuration let's set it for 35 set this one for 35 so both our max rate and our fast jog is at 35 again you can set your fast jog slower than your max rate for jogging with the control panel if you like and the max rate will be your rapids say your G0 move so let's write that to settings yes settings saved 
exit, start up CNC 12. Wait for the VCP to come up. All right, let's go ahead and home, reset home. Got to press the reset. It says software exit, cycle E stop, reset to continue. Got to do that first. Always look up in this dialog box when things don't happen the way you expect them to. Let's do a reset home. 10 inches a minute. Hits the switch, comes off of it. Let's look at our machine position. It's at zero. Okay, so let's, we're in rapid and we're in continuous. That's what we were set for before when we exited last. So let's go rapid. Okay, things sound pretty good there. Okay guys, so that should give you a starting point. Um, you know, if you, you want to make sure that you set up your, your axis so that if you hear, this is a stepper motor. If you hear it stalling, that you want to back down on your rapids, you know, find out where that sweet spot is, where it's just, where it just stops stalling then back that off another 20 or 30 percent and then that, sh that should get you going. Remember that's a rapid move. Now we don't have a way any weight on the table so if we had more weight on the table that's more weight that the stepper has to turn so you, your stall rate might might need to change a little bit. That's about enough for this video. I think we covered a lot of material. I hope this helps you guys out. See you on the next one.